Welcome to the Windows Computer and Technology channel and um, so this is the uh, second video in preparing for the end of support of Windows 10. So let's say that you've checked everything and your PC is not compatible, does not have the minimum requirements to move on to Windows 11. Uh, that means that you'll have uh, several other choices that come to mind. Um, first one is paying for extended support. We know that Microsoft will offer a paid extended support for three years. We also know that there's a um, f another company that's called Zero Patch that also offers upgrade for five years to Windows 10. So you'll have the option to think about should I keep Windows 10 and if I keep Windows 10 I'll pay for extended support and that will keep you going for a certain amount of years um, it means you can keep your PC without any problems it means you can continue using your PC pretty much the way you're using it now keep your software uh, it could be you know a good deal to pay for extended support uh, one thing for sure is that you don't want to run Windows without a support, without security updates, because it makes you extremely vulnerable, a lot more than what people think. Um, and so it's important to stay safe, which means that's one option. The other option, of course, is maybe I want to buy a new PC. Uh, maybe my PC is old and, you know, it's, it's time to move on. Uh, that's something to think about too and you've got of course more than a year to think about it that's why starting now is a good idea and you know you can wait until next year um, is there gonna be a rush of people going to buy Windows machines next year maybe some suggest that yes it could be the case with the end of support of Windows 10 that PC sales are gonna go up which means there might be some temptation to hike prices of PCs too. So, you know, just check out the possibilities and what you want to do and be prepare, prepared for that. The, um, of course, for the more tech savvy user, the uh, next option could be, you know, using uh, uh, Linux, which would run on a PC that is not compatible with Windows 11. Um, Linux distros comes in multiple forms. It is different and no it is not you know <laughs> I see Linux users saying we do everything on Linux now. No you don't and that is a blatant lie because of all the hardware and software that people can use uh, you know you just got very few choices for software and hardware on Linux that can work if you have specialized hardware, especially like me, uh, Linux is impossible. And so it depends what you do. If you are a heavy user with a lot of specialized hardware or software that do different things, Linux is not for you, that's for sure. And if you're just an average user doing email, going on the web, um, not much more than that. Online games. Um, there's, you know, Linux is, is could be a possibility for some. But it is different and it's a learning curve. And whatever they say, the Linux fanboys, nope, regular users get lost once they get into Linux. Totally. And no, Linux is not problem free. I've ran so many Linux distros that will have problems at some point and still do so uh, you know you've got to figure out what you want to do and I think Linux is more for tech savvy user and if you want to go there uh, it's fine it's a, it's another way of you know continuing uh, to use a, an old PC so these are some of the options to think about and um, the last one of course if your PC can run offline if you are using it for sp special, you know, hardware or software that 
you don't need internet. Um, you know, just like Windows XP, Windows 7. Uh, some people keep old Windows 7 or Windows XP machines that are just not connected. And there's that's fine. Uh, the problem for security is when they are connected. So that could be another use of a PC if you have something special to run on Windows 10 that, say, would not run on Windows 11. If you enjoy my videos, please subscribe, give us thumbs up. Thank you for watching.